the greatest idea ever formulated. But as we're celebrating the bicentenary of Charles Darwin's birth, one question to ask might be, would we be doing this at all if Darwin hadn't completed his work and his evolution manuscripts had gone unpublished? I suggest the answer is yes. First, inspired by Adam Sedgwick, Darwin was a stratigrapher and geologist and his impact here was immense. While influenced by Charles Lyell's realization that the Earth was far older than the then prevalent understanding, it was Darwin who pushed our understanding of geological history into the thousands of millions of years we understand today. It was Darwin's observations of volcanic uplift in Chile that reinforced the accumulation of small, gradual changes. The motto of all Darwin scholarship, as opposed to occasional catastrophic ones, has been accountable for most of the change on the surface of the Earth. And in this, he anticipated plate tectonics. It was his understanding of the interplay between volcanism and coral growth that explained the formation of coral atolls. Darwin is one of the fathers of modern geology. Darwin studied intensely the biological variety of the organisms in Great Pucklands Meadow close to his home in Down. It was an extension of the friendly fecund fens of Cambridge. He not only explored what species there were, but how they interrelated with one another, with one another and the environment, including the relationship between earthworms and the formation of soils. Were he not the father of evolution, he would almost certainly be the father of ecology. He's certainly the patron saint, or rather, patron scientist of earthworms. He ennobled what had hitherto been dismissed as the meanest of creatures. As so often with Darwin, the meanest gave him his most majestic insights. Darwin's powers of observation and deduction had few limits. His monograph on creeping and climbing plants predicted that the mechanism for the movement and clinging of plant tendrils must in some way be related to principles active in their growing tips, which in some way were related to the plant's response to the direction of light. In doing this, he anticipated and predicted the discovery of auxins, plant hormones, when such things were unknown. Yet another paternity claim. His family grows apace. He was the archetypal Victorian father. He was the father also of modern plant physiology. Darwin wrote <coughs> on the expressions of the emotions in man and animals, a book which after the rise of disreputable social Darwinism was rather avoided until recently as Darwin's understanding of the evolutionary origins of emotional behavior has again been recognized. Here Darwin could be called, let us say for a change, a founder this time of modern behavioral science and of psychology. And as, we come, as we're becoming increasingly aware, thanks in large part to the work of James Moore and Adrian Desmond, his progressive views on human equality, all coming from the worn stem, and his determination to prove this gives him a firm place in the pantheon of humanitarianism. And of course, his theory set alight a discussion on the validity of religion, which continues unabated to this day, even into the letter pages of today's times, this morning, which it dominates. So, as we celebrate Darwin, the man today, and on his origin of species, we can see this as only part of his genius. Contemporary interest in him is justifiable across a remarkable spectrum. He fathered forth battalions, and they all go marching off. Thank you.